London derby game between Crystal Palace and Charlton Athletic. Now for the two teams. Palace make a change in goal from the side that beat Tooting in the Cup. Tony Burns returns in place of Paul Hammond. Jeff Johnson still not fit. As for Charlton, they've uh, got a settled side. They are unchanged. But one question is, what effect will that very difficult pitch and grueling cup tie at Tooting on Wednesday have on Palace? A point for the Palace skipper, Peter Taylor. At the moment, we think the pitch out there is Wembley anyway, because uh, the Tooting pitch was a bit rough. And uh, I think it should be a great game today. I haven't played too well just lately, but I'm going to put that right today, I hope. Now, David Young, the Charlton skipper. Being from the North East, this is the first time I've been involved in, a, in the London derby, and um, I don't quite really know what to expect. We've been playing quite well. We haven't been too consistent this year, but we've scored a lot of goals, and we've conceded a few because we're an attacking side. But I think Palace are in the same sort of vein as us, but I think it'll be a very, very exciting match. The referee today is John Williams from Wrexham, his first appearance at Selhurst Park, incidentally, and now the big crowd waits for the start. And it's Charlton Athletic who get us away, attacking the goal to our left in the all-white strip with red stockings, Crystal Palace in their red and blue striped shirts and blue shorts. Taylor now attacking hard on Flanagan, and Jump also going in, but uh, Flanagan going past him and a foul on the Charlton Athletic player, giving them a free kick in the opening 20 seconds of the game. One that Eamon Dunphy will curl into that Crystal Palace penalty area. And there it goes, Tony Burns is going there and has to punch it away and only half got to it. But uh, that really was quite a violent assault on him by Harry Cripps, no less. And it'll be a free kick. So Tony Burns back in the side again. Goldthorpe going for it and winning it. But winning it unfairly. And Palace get the throw. The uh, free kick. And Ian Evans. Just a fraction inside. That Charlton Athletic half. Taylor trying to get ahead of to it. Jeffries, who's playing well at the moment, but giving that one straight to Flanagan and Dunphy and Cripps. An old Millwall combination there, and now back to David Young. Flanagan. Straight to John, taken nicely on his chest. Forward now for Hinchelwood. Into the path this time of Chaladon, but Curtis spotted the danger, and it'll fall for Swindonhurst, and there's the header and Goldfield. With a chance to get it away. And a throw to Crystal Palace. Taylor will take it. And here's Whittle again, again darting in in front of that uh, Charlton defender, Cripps, bringing him down right on the corner of the box. A free kick to Palace. Seven minutes gone. There's a quiet word there between Taylor and Venables. They've got something up their sleeve. A lot of big men are lined up on the far side, including Ian Evans and Jim Cannon have come up from defence. And referee Williams deciding he wants those Charlton defenders back the full 10 yards. Venables or Taylor? It's Taylor curling it in. And on the far side, Cannon going in. Jim Cannon has scored for Crystal Palace. And so it worked for Palace. They weren't sure, Charlton, whether it would be Venables or Taylor who would take it. It was Taylor who curled it in. And it was Cannon who met it beautifully at the far side to sneak it in 1-0 to Crystal Palace. Eight minutes gone. Jim Cannon's first goal of the season, putting Crystal Palace in the lead. Curtis now, a high ball. Chatterton going in there. Jeffries getting it away, and now a free kick to Charlton. Dunphy there. Number four is Bowman. Curtis is also in there, and Flanagan too. Now will Palace get a bit of their own treatment? The Palace wall with Taylor, with Chatterton there. Bowman running over it. 
And now Taylor, the man with a great stride, and it's virtually one against one. He's got to take on Young. Other Palace men up there with him, and it's still with Taylor. And finally, it's Goldthorpe, who had to slide in and get the ball away. A great run out of deep defence by Peter Taylor. Couldn't be quite sure whether he could go all the way on his own. Looked around for a little bit of support, and there was none there. And uh, Goldthorpe got back in time to concede the corner. Taylor with the corner for Crystal Palace. Curled in again there. Hitcherwood with the header. Just wide of that far post. And Taylor with those swinging corners is going to cause all sorts of problems. It was his swinging free kick that led to the goal. And Peter Taylor, who confessed before the game that his form was none too good, could well be quite a, a worry throughout the afternoon for Charlton. That looked like a push by a horse here on Jeffries. Well, I'm glad he's given it the other way. So it must have been a push by Jeffries on Horsefield. The free kick to Charlton. Hey! Bob Curtis is going to take it. Oh, and Horsefield nearly got to it. Hales did! My goodness, how did that save come about with Tony Burns? Tremendous piece of play by him. Clenching his fist and he was pleased with that. It looked after Horsfield had just failed to get to it. But Hales would make a tremendous goal there for Charlton. But Burns did remarkably well. And it's a corner then. Here we go again. Oh, and that went right across the face of that Palace goal. And here's Derek Hales after it again. There's his cross hit in low. Cannon, Hinshelwood. Young for Charlton. Cannon again having a good game. But a throw to Charlton Athletic. Richie Bowman's going to take the throw. Venable is uh, seeking to get a bit of organisation in that defence. Oh, that's a good long throw there towards Hales. Has he got the better of Evans? No, he can't. But it might fall for Bowman. Goal kick. But it's a free kick then to Charlton, which Curtis will take. Two, four, six white shirts lined up in and around that Crystal Palace penalty area, including Hales, and now it's won't go. Horsfield turned it in, but there was an offside decision, and Horsfield's not happy about it. In fact, he's startled by it, but what a very good jump it was by Hales from that corner, and Horsfield's reactions were quick, but invalid. So it's still 1-0 to Palace. and Young oh a good cut out by Derek Jeffries jump or rather a cannon forward towards Paul Hinchelwood Taylor free kick foul by Harry Cripps on Peter Taylor sportingly going away to pick up the ball and I don't think he's going to let it go until he knows that the Charlton wall is properly lined up and their defence is organised now Venables and Taylor having another word is Taylor going to curl one? he is again and that time Evans is there oh and he's got a free header and should have made more of it so Ian Evans there meeting again the curling free kick from Peter Taylor had a free header and missed. Well, that looked like a push on Hinchelwood, but the referee decided, I suppose, to play the advantage there, and it's with Taylor now. Curling another free kick in, and a little Bowman got there for that one. Cripps whacking it away. Cannon closing in on it with Horsfield. And again, a good decision by the referee, allowing the advantage to be played. And Powell 
Bale takes it up for Charlton. Bowman has made a tremendous run for Charlton. Venables has gone back there with him. And there's his cross coming in. And Flanagan going in there. And Jeffries only half put it away. Great little run by Bowman. And here he is again. There's his cross once more. Hale's going in there. Flanagan. And now Taylor can take it up for Palace. There's Wickle. And they've got three against two for Charlton. And Wickle showed too much of it. There was a chance there for Palace on the breakout. Richie Bowman really made a tremendous run there and is working so hard. There's Colin Powell. But Bowman really the smallest man on the field who probably has got the biggest heart on the field. He really is doing a tremendous job in the middle of the field. Swindlehurst trying to lay it off to Taylor. Cripps finding it forward. Jeffries, oh, what beautiful control. That was a beautiful piece of control by Jeffries. Cannon. And Goldfoot. Chanathan going in there. A fairly free kick to Charlton. Curtis will take the kick. Jeffries. Now Powell. Oh, what a good shot! Oh, and what a goal by Colin Powell. Tremendous goal for Charlton Athletic. He took that inside, and Colin Powell whacked that with his left foot and makes it 1 1. With 32 minutes gone, only his fourth goal this season, the former Barnet player, number seven. Like a bullet, that left foot shot hit the back of that palace now. Now it's Whittle for Palace. Swindlehurst trying to lay it off for Whittle. And Whittle and uh, Krebs were squaring up a little bit there. Two managers, you can see there, Malcolm Allison and Andy Nelson on the right. Another free kick then to Crystal Palace. Again, Taylor and Venables are discussing something. Again, the referee wants the wall back, and Curtis wants everybody back, including Hales, who's now coming back, as you can see. They really have got worried, uh, Charlton, by these free kicks. And not surprising, because Swindlehurst now, who has got perhaps the fiercest shot of all, and I wouldn't mind betting he's going to have a go. No? Taylor. Curling it, deflection, it's a crossbar, Chanadon, 2-1. Nicky Chanadon. Well, that was a lucky one for Crystal Palace. The free kick by Peter Taylor, took a deflection, hit the crossbar, and Chanadon almost with a reflex, puts it in to make it 2-1. in fact here at Crystal Palace nobody prouder on the field uh, today with that Nicky Chatterton goal but his father there just touching his hair Len Chatterton the Crystal Palace groundsman Flanagan again Dumfries beaten by Taylor I don't know how he quite knew how he beat Taylor but he did oh. Straight off the ice hockey rink. A body check there by Derek Jeffries on Harry Cripps. Not very often you see Harry get knocked off a ball. That really was some thud. Quite properly, it's a free kick to Charlton Athletic, which Mike Flanagan will take. Horsfield making a run towards the near post. Cripps is right in there too. But it might still come for Cripps. And now it's for Bowman. And hit first time. Goal kick to Crystal Palace. Flanagan. Now, Flanagan against Jump. There's the cross from Flanagan. Powell's on.
on the far side, and so was Cannon. Dunphy with a shot. Oh, just past the post. Fell nicely from Dunphy as it came out from that scrimmage in the area. Out to Dunphy. Hit first time left foot. And the whistle goes for half time. An excellent first half that's been a credit to the third division and to both the clubs. Palace going ahead with Jim Cannon, then it was Colin Powell, a tremendous goal that equalised for Charlton Athletic. But then within a minute, Nicky Chatterton had made it 2-1 after that to ball to come off the crossbar. 2-1 for Crystal Palace. A lot more then to come on the big match this afternoon. But now the half-time score here at Selhurst Park. Crystal Palace 2, Charlton Athletic 1, and we'll be right back with the second half. Welcome back. Well, the sun may be setting in spectacular fashion over southwest London, but here inside Selhurst Park, everything is bright and waiting for a second half, which everyone in here, I'm sure, hopes will match the excellence of the first. Crystal Palace then leading by two goals to one, now attacking the goal to our left. Well, in fact, we've got a full start. have not lost in their last five games and indeed they've lost only once at home this season and Taylor now planning it forward Bobby Goldthorpe the header away to Harry Cripps Hales and uh, Paul Hinsherwood and Eamon Dunphy for Charlton Athletic free kick to Charlton Take. Hales was allowed to get to that one quite easily. Dumpy being forced off the ball by Venables. Whittle. Very quiet game by his standards, Alan Whittle so far. Here's Hinchelwood again. Played on nicely for Cannon, making a good uh, break down the left. Oh, and a tremendous shot there by Hinchelwood just over the bar. Really doubts in the Charlton defence there as to the uh, way that Hinchel was allowed. Hinchel was allowed quite so much room as that. Flanagan now pushing the back by uh, Swindlehurst. Free kick to Charlton Athletic, which Flanagan will take. Bobby Goldthorpe's going up. Harry Cripps is going up, and Paul Hinchelwood has come back. So too has David Swindlehurst. Really is congested now, that penalty, penalty area, as Flanagan curls in a long free kick. Oh, a missed kick there, and Dumphy hopes to make something of it. And finally, Jeffries gets it away, but hits Chaladon. Hinchelwood finally away for a throw to Charlton. to be desired in terms of the organisation of their defence, Mr. Palace. Always get the feeling that Charlton could snatch an equaliser, and here comes Hales. A long cross there, and Powell is there, but... didn't quite get the header in that he wanted. Good challenging piece of football there by Taylor. No free kick given, but Chatterton can take it up now, and that almost came through either for Chatterton or for Swindlehurst. And instead, it's a throw to Crystal Palace. Chatterton rather desperate in defence there. The darting of Taylor and the darting of Chatterton unsettled them a little bit, and here's Whittle. Well, Whittle's lost out, and Powell can take it up for Chatterton. Two sides who really are throwing themselves at each other in attack. Flanagan for Powell to continue the run. Evans can pick him up, though, and Chatterton can help him out. All straight at Dunphy, but it'll fall for Venables. Played on for Taylor. Swindlehurst. Looked at him there and took up a position instead of making a tackle. So now 
piece of a pass there by Chatterton for Cannon. Well, Hinshelwood hesitated for a moment and then found it was going his way. And it still will go for Crystal Palace's way. It's with uh, Chatterton again. A shot on the turn. Oh. Taken out of the air so easily there by Tut. with Jeffries. Foul on Jim Cannon in the foreground here. Palace coach Frank Lord on this side of the field. I wonder what for. Maybe a tie-up for somebody? Maybe a word of advice for somebody? Goldthorpe's header and Venables too. And then David Youngs. Taken nicely on the chest by Flanagan. Chase that he says and so Hales is after it. But Evans gets there first for Palace. at the moment, still not really living up to the first. And Charlton still this goal down, but can they pull it back now as Powell turns it in again, and Evans side puts it away. Here's Bowman. Back for Curtis, hit first time. Now Taylor. Cripps almost bodily trying to pull him back. And play on, says the referee, playing the advantage. Chatterton taking it away, but it'll be a free kick, or will it be a drop ball? I think it looks like a drop ball. Flanagan. It's got to be Burns. says the referee and the linesman but from the right place well. oh now that's put Horsfield onside by a Charlton player by a Crystal Palace player rather and Venables gets it away two Palace players are down both Evans and uh, the number five Jeffries now, can uh, Swindlehurst recover quicker off the wall? No, he can't, and it finds Harry Cripps instead. Still, Derek Jeffries out of the play, but Evans is up again. Flanagan to Dunphy. Being pushed onto the field by Frank Lord, in fact, is Jeffries. Desperate for these two points at Crystal Palace. Young playing another high ball there towards Horsfield. It's not away yet. Stuart Jump could put it in trouble. And somehow Burns got there. And Jump really put his side in trouble there. Burns just getting there before Hales. And in fact, there was a foul by Hales on the Palace goalkeeper. And a free kick. But a very brave piece of goalkeeping there by Tony Burns. Goldthorpe, a good positive defensive header. Now, Powell, can he get through Cannon? There's a cheeky little cross. Oh, and just over the back of that crossbar. You really begin to wonder whether that heavy ground at Tooting on Wednesday has taken something out of Palace in these last few minutes. Certainly, Charlton are lasting the better and are looking the more dangerous side in these closing minutes, with Palace still leading 2-1. And Young heading it away. Dumpy there, chatted it in strongly. Cripps now for Charlton. Played on for Fanagan. And Jump has got plenty of time to get that back, but decides Hales was moving in just a little too swiftly. Taylor's flicked head off. Looked like a push in the back, but the advantage was played by the referee, which in the end turns out to be no advantage for Crystal Palace. Into injury time now at the end of the game. Curtis for Charlton. They've got to do it now, Charlton. And Arthur Horsfield is right up there. But Jeffries 
He's had a storming game in defence. Here he is again, the number five. And it's all over. And Crystal Palace have picked up two very valuable points with that 2-1 win. That's the spirit the game's been played in. A fierce competitive game, but played in a good spirit. Terry Venables there, the number four, shaking hands with Eamon Dunphy. David Young, the number six for Charlton, who's probably played as well as anybody on the field. A second half that didn't quite live up to all the excitement of the first. And a final scoreline at Selhurst Park that reads Crystal Palace 2, Charlton Athletic 1. And indeed a credit to the third division and also to the Football League really that it can uh, produce football of that quality so far down its league. Palace now third in the table, uh, Charlton have slipped to seventh. Our guest today, as I say, Malcolm Allison of Crystal Palace. Andy Nelson, the Charlton manager, who's not a man given to wild statements, uh, told me afterwards that he really felt the Charlton were playing well enough to come to your place and win yesterday. Well, they've having a very good run and uh, they've got some very good players. Uh, it's probably the best team Charlton had for a long time. Um, they caused us a few problems yesterday. We never played very well, but uh, I think that we'll finish above in the end of the season, although Andy seems to think the other way around. Yes, you've got a bit of publicity this morning about that, that you uh, are prepared to put a fair bit of money down to that effect. Well, it was, it was only because Andy said that they finish <laughs> above us. Who particularly impressed you in the Charlton side, Malcolm? Uh, well, Colin Powell scored an excellent goal, and he's a very useful player. Uh, Mike Flanagan, he's a, he's a very useful player. And the two twin centre-halves, uh, Goldthorpe and Young, yeah. they, did, they stopped everything. They Gave you nothing, did they? No, they did very well indeed. Peter Taylor, your exciting number 11, uh, told us, as you heard on the start of the programme, he's not playing as well as he can. And indeed, in World of Sport yesterday, I, said, I mentioned the same thing to him. But he's got rave notices today. Well, he's such an exciting player that when, when uh, the press see him play, everything he does well, I think they notice now. Um, but the great thing about him is when he's not playing brilliantly, he's still working very, very hard. And he's making, uh, he's making a very, very good captain by example. Mm. Well, certainly gave a good example with the free kicks that he took yesterday. Both led uh, to goals. So at least your two goals came from Peter Taylor free kicks. Yeah, he's got uh, excellent skill. You see, you see Peter, he's out of the picture now. You see him come in the picture and play a great in-swing with his left foot. Flights into the far side of the six-yard box, gives the goalkeeper no chance. Then you'll see Jim Cannon come inside Bob Curtis and knock it down in the bottom corner. It was a well-taken goal and it was an excellent free kick. And you see that Jim's over the moon. Tell us the story behind the Charlton uh, equaliser and Colin Powell. Well, the Colin Powell, you'll see, you'll see uh, the ball knocked down here to, to Derek Jeffries, but before the match, I told Jim Cannon to make Colin Powell go on the outside. Uh, make him come on the inside because he's got no left foot. <laughs> and this ball was knocked down to Derek Jeffries. There's Colin Powell now, takes it inside Jim, takes it past Derek Jeffries. Now you watch him play out on the inside of his left foot in the top corner. There's a player with no left yeah, foot. Yeah, no left foot. Look at this goal. <laughs> How long can you be? Yeah. But then Peter Taylor with his other free kick. I think we've got to watch in the wall here. Terry Venables, the number four, the dark-shirted figure there, trying to pull Bob Curtis away, wasn't he there? He runs away. I don't know whether they got mixed up there. I think that uh, Terry ran into him there. And you see Davis Winless go over the ball. And here comes Peter Taylor. And you see the ball hit Bob Curtis on the corner of the shoulder, deflect up in the air, over the goalkeeper, hit the crossbar. Now watch Nicky Chatterton running through the middle of the picture. Does it hit him on the hand as well as the thigh well, here, Well, you Malcolm? see Nicky here. He hits it. And it might have hit him, might have hit him on the chest as it came off his knee. But uh, he, he followed it up very, very well. It's been a very important week for you, hasn't it? Yes. Uh, to get through that uh, very difficult cup tie at, Lu at uh, Tutin, Luton, I never <laughs> said, at Tutin, where the ground was very, very bad and the wind was bad, uh, I was very pleased to get that over, especially missing the penalty. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, to get to third position in the league was been a nice week for us. Chairman said to me afterwards, third in the league, he said, that frightens me. Well, it doesn't frighten me, you know, I told him that if he can be 10 points in front, you know, that's the place to be. But uh, everybody's happy at the Palace at the moment and uh, we're looking forward to a good run now. Referee John Williams of Wrexham, I think he kept up beautifully with the game. Uh, he was always on top of things, but he gave a lot of free kicks. There were 40-odd stoppages, Malcolm. Yeah, I think that uh, they're, they're rather pressurised by the Football League, you know, with different circulars they get. And I think they're for guidance more than directives. I think we maybe misinterpreted Yeah, but they, they're still under pressure from them. I think that we've got a lot of good referees, and uh, I think they can referee with their own personality and their own knowledge without this pressure. Uh, we'd see in the match yesterday, you know, where uh, the referee stops the game on a couple of occasions or maybe five or six occasions when he could have allowed the Your game to Your point is that they stop it too quickly, that yeah. they don't allow the game to flow, they don't play the advantage, which referees in any case will say is the most delicate law to, to play in any case. Here are a couple of examples, Malcolm, that you had in mind. 
You'll see Mike Flanagan on the ball here. He beats Peter Taylor. He nutmegs him there. And there you see Terry Venables come and play the ball. He gets underneath Flanagan and plays the ball towards the touchline. And that's when the whistle's gone the there. The whistle's gone there. Now the ball's gone loose to Flanagan and he could still play the ball up to one of his forwards, you know, and the, and the game could have carried on. But the referee had already blown his whistle and there was no infringement or anything. You know, he could have, let, he could have allowed the game to go on for just half a second and uh, he'd take the advantage. Here's a, here's a goal kick by Tony Burns. And you'll see Goldfulton and Swindlehurst jump for the ball. You know, just a, a straightforward jump. But you see the referee there, he's taking the whistle to his mouth while the ball's still in the air. And there, the two players jump. There's not, nothing in it. And it's gone. The ball's dropped down to Curtis, who could have carried on and playing, you know, and, and the advantage could have been taken by that. It's a general criticism of referees, that really, isn't it? Not just the one that we saw yesterday. Oh, no. Uh, everybody, every manager in the game is talking about the amount of stoppages, you know, that's, that's causing the game to be delayed. And uh, it's also frustrating the spectators. Uh, the managers have a meeting in a week's time. Is this one of the things that they're going to discuss? This will be one of the things they discuss. Uh, we'll be discussing uh, the, the, of, uh, the point about injuries, whereby uh, uh, Bertie Mee made a, made a statement at the last manager meeting that he would like to see that players who are injured left down and the play carry on. Now, there's nobody uh, with more knowledge about injuries than Bertie Mee, so if he says that, you know, I, I'm, certain, I'm certain I'm going to agree with him. And uh, I'm sure the public would enjoy it. And I'm sure you'll see lots of players getting up if they know they're not going to be attended to or the game's not going to be stopped. The offside law is another thing that uh, is going to be brought up, I guess. Yeah, I think that the, the offside law is, is a thing that's a very delicate thing, but um, the play, players not interfering with play is causing a, a lot of problems in football. And uh, you see linesmen putting up their flags when players are not involved in the play at all. And... Uh, I think that we'll talk about that very seriously. Just one final point. In your programme, though, you said yesterday that you rated British referees second in the world only to the Dutch. Yeah, this is why I think, I think that they can use their own personality and their own knowledge, you know, to referee the games the way they want to referee them, uh, without all these circulars coming and saying they've got to do this and they've got to do that. Malcolm, well done yesterday. Third in the third division. It's nice to see things turning for you at last as well. Thank you.